Thank you, Quinn. You're a fine young man. Thank you. Um, hey, everybody. <laughs> um, I, I, it looks like I'm the last speaker of the day, so I will be uh, brief, I promise, and then we'll send you off to your beautiful state-of-the-art cafeteria. You know, when I was here in the 80s, we used to look forward to Sloppy Joe Day. And the old gym was the new gym, so it's been a while. Um, I want to talk to you about inspiration and ideas. Have you ever had a fantastic idea? A really, really great idea, a surefire winner, an OMG of an idea. You tell people what it is and they're like, oh yeah, dude, you've got to do that. Yeah, yeah, me too, it happened this morning. And does that idea give you just a great feeling about yourself? You feel like the future is bright and you're just gonna go out and conquer the world? Yeah, yeah, me too. And do you ever take that great idea and do absolutely nothing with it? Yeah. You stick it on the shelf, it gathers dust until your enthusiasm for it slowly fizzles out until you think it's the stupidest idea you ever had and you don't know what anybody ever saw in it. Yeah, welcome to being an artist. What I'm going to talk to you about today is from my perspective as a creative artist, but really you could apply this in any area of life. Uh, by the way, even though I am an actor, I do have my notes because this, I'm not playing a character, I'm talking to you as me. Um, for those of, you, those of you that don't know me and aren't familiar with my work, I am uh, an actor and a director and a writer in the film and TV industry. But I started out on stage doing theater, uh, classical theater, mostly musical theater. And I started out at this school under the direction of the man that this incredible building is named after, T. Gill Bunch. I have a creative partner in my life. It's my wife, Christine Audi. She's a brilliant actor and writer, and I'm very lucky to have access to her talents. When we were young, Starting out as actors, we had a great idea for a musical. I mean, really, it was her idea, but I just kind of wrote her coattails. Uh, this musical was going to be a jukebox musical. Do you guys know what a jukebox musical is? It's like Mamma Mia, where you take pre-existing pop songs, rock songs, whatever, and you build a story around it, and that's your musical. This musical was going to be set in the 1980s in a large American city, in a legendary music club that is about to be shut down. There's a, a romantic boy meets girl story at its center. It was going to have lots of songs from the 80s, lots of fashions from the 80s, big hair, spandex, skinny ties, musicians on the stage. Now, those of you who know musicals might be saying to yourselves, wow, yeah, Milo and Christine created Rock of Ages, the hit Tony Award winning Broadway musical that played 3,000 performances and toured North America and had productions in Toronto and Los Angeles and London and, and, and was turned into a movie starring Tom Cruise. That's a picture of me from when I went to Brentwood, by the way. <laughs> um, no, no, we did not create Rock of Ages. Our show was called No Feelings and was set in the New York punk scene at CBGB's and was loosely based on Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing and was never produced. Because even though we had a, uh, we had a, a premise, we had characters, we had relationships, we had a musical genre, we never wrote a script. And the reason we never wrote a script is because two things, we got busy, we were young actors, our careers started taking off, we were traveling a lot. But also, I heard about a workshop in Los Angeles for this little show that was going to become Rock of Ages, set in the 1980s, in a large American city, in a legendary music club that was about to be shut down with a romantic boy meets girl story at its center and songs from the 80s and fashions from the 80s, big hair, spandex, skinny ties, musicians on stage. Sounds familiar, right? What happened to me well, oh, really, what happened to us was we slammed up against the most common obstacle to creativity. Confidence. 
we asked ourselves, is our idea any good? The 19th century poet and philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson said, in every work of genius, we recognize our own rejected thoughts. They come back to us with a certain alienated majesty. Well, when I finally saw Rock of Ages, all I could think of was how majestically alienated I felt. <laughs> <clears throat> it was, checking my notes, thank you very much. It was running up against another impediment, which is thinking too far ahead. So we asked ourselves, is our idea any good? And will people like it? Will it be worth it? It's always worth it. You always have to try. You'll learn more from your failures than from your successes. And I think that applies not just in the creative arts, but in any industry. So how do we act upon that inspiration? When we have that spark of inspiration, how do we take it from idea to execution, to something tangible? Well, we can start out very simply. Absorb. Whatever your creative discipline, absorb yourself in it. Um, if you're a writer, read. If you're an actor, go to theater, watch movies, watch TV. If you're a musician, listen to all different kinds of music. When I was growing up, I loved TV sitcoms. I loved them. Happy Days, Mork and Mindy. When I was in college, it was Friends, it was Seinfeld. Now, Big Bang Theory, Modern Family. But when I became a professional actor, I started out doing serious drama, classical theater, 20 years of theater. And then I had the good fortune to be cast as a high school principal in a kid's sitcom called Mr. Young. Some of you may be familiar with it. <laughs> Suddenly, my 20 years of experience in training in theater was completely useless. My performance in that show was completely informed by the thousands of hours I had spent watching sitcoms. I learned from the best. Uh, by the way, um, my performance as the principal in that show was in no way based on any current or former headmasters of this fine institution. <laughs> Just putting that out there, that's my disclaimer. <laughs> Sorry, bud. By consuming art, we give ourselves the tools to create art. Another quote from Emerson, genius borrows nobly. If you see something that inspires you, borrow it, steal it, develop it. Don't worry if someone has done it before you, because I guarantee you one thing, whatever your end result is that started from that moment of inspiration, it's going to be completely unique to you because it's coming from you. It's being filtered through your lens and each one of you is a completely unique individual. If you think about it, you can compare that to Hamlet. Let's talk about Hamlet. I'm sure you guys are sick of it by this point, but how many actors have played Hamlet over the last 500 years? A lot. <laughs> 10,000, maybe 50,000, I mean, who knows? Same play, same character, same lines, but comparing, say, Mel Gibson's performance to John Gielgud's is like comparing a cucumber to a lemon, and I'm not saying which is which. Mel Gibson is the lemon. <laughs> Don't talk yourself out of anything. Just do it. That's also a famous quote, by the way. Can't remember where I heard it, but I'm pretty sure it's out there somewhere. Second thing, take the leap. Take that jump. The first step is always the hardest, and there are a million reasons not to do something. But you've got to have the courage and the confidence to move forward. If you can just 
Write down notes for yourself. If you have an idea for a story, just start banging out that first awful draft. Talk to that person in authority who might be able to help you or give you some advice. Summon up the courage to talk to someone. When I was uh, just an actor on Mr. Young, Gil Bunch would be so proud, by the way, um, I had a crew member come up to me and say, you seem to really know what you're doing in this genre. Maybe you should ask to direct an episode. And I thought to myself, you know, I just started acting on TV. I've barely directed theater. I, I couldn't see myself being in charge of a cast and crew of 40 to 50 people and a $700,000 budget. I just, it didn't, it didn't seem real to me. But I thought about it and I started taking baby steps. I started talking to the producers and I talked to the writers. And then I put together a little cast and crew and we shot a demo reel and a short film. And those efforts led directly to me being offered to direct multiple episodes of multiple different kids shows from Vancouver to Toronto. Again, I got nominated for awards and it, uh, it just led me to where I am today, which is that now Christine and I have a kids show in development with Netflix. Which brings me to this. Gather the tools you need to succeed. Whether it's a new camera, or a tablet, a new laptop. Maybe it's just a quiet place for you to work. Maybe it's surrounding yourself with people who are also creative and who care about you enough to say the things that maybe you don't want to hear. Different viewpoints are absolutely crucial to the creative process. Okay, last quick story about me and Mr. Young, and then I promise I won't mention it again. When I was in the process of auditioning, I'd had three callbacks over a couple of months and I'd heard nothing. We were heading out of town with our kids. We really needed a little vacation. It had been very busy. We needed to get out of town. And I got a call in the car on the way to the ferry that my fourth callback for Mr. Young was going to be the next morning. I almost told my agent to forget about it. I thought it was a mirage. I thought they were just going to hire an American. I'd had three callbacks and heard nothing. I was pretty much fed up with it by that point. My creative partner, my wife, said to me, don't be an idiot. Of course you're going to go to that callback and we'll have a staycation. Don't worry about it, but you need to go to that callback. That was not what I wanted to hear, especially the part about me being an idiot. <laughs> but I went. I booked it. We did three seasons, nominated for awards. It transformed my career, led me to where I am today. I often think about how close I was to saying no and blowing that chance. Who knows where I'd be today? Maybe I'd be working at Tim Hortons. I don't know. My career as an artist and an entertainer has run the gamut from theater the Brentwood stage, stages all across North America, TV, film, directing, writing, Netflix. That was my path. But what will yours be? I don't know. What am I, a psychic? What I do know is that every single one of you is going to have your own unique journey with creativity. Be brave, gird your loins, and treasure your ideas. Because I'll tell you a secret about ideas. There are no bad ones. They're all good. Every idea that you come up with is a good idea. There's only the ideas that you do something about and those that you don't. Those ones up on the shelf. Be brave. Take that step. It all starts with that one tiny step. Now, I'm going to go home and I'm going to try to follow my own advice because I think it sounds pretty good. Thank you very much. Thank you.